Hello everybody, welcome back to Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler, as always, with Cool Stuff Inc. And this, this is Construct. You might also know this deck is Hardened Scales, but look, this card got, this deck has some new stuff from Akoria that I think is worth talking about, okay? We just can't get to this soon enough. The Ozolith! This card is nuts! Whenever a creature you control leaves a battlefield, if it had counters, put those counters onto the Ozolith. And I don't know anything about Akoria. I don't know what the Ozolith is. I just know that it's a pretty neat card for this deck. Uh, it's beginning combat on your turn. If it has counters, you can put them all onto target creature. So, this is pretty sweet. And this deck is full of counters. It's a Hardened Scales deck. It's the Hardened Scales deck. This could be the new form of the Hardened Scales deck. One mana green enchantment. Whenever you put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature, put a second one. Well, that's pretty good when you're playing stuff like Walking Ballista and Stone Cold Serpent and Hangerback Walker and Steel Overseer. That is a lot of creatures that come into play with counters or put counters on things. So does Metallic Mimic. We'll name Construct because if you take a quick look through the deck, these are all constructs. I guess except for the snake here, but you can name Construct pretty well. It is sweet. Uh, Winding Constrictor, this is more copies of Hardened Skills in your deck. You get to put more counters onto your creatures. This is why the deck is green-black. You then get the black card you want. You get Fatal Push and Thoughtseize, so you have removal and interaction. You even get a couple of Evolutionary Leap. You get to sack your Hangerback Walker, go get a creature from top of your deck, and look, I am very excited to see how sacrificing things, putting counters on Ozolith, using the counters from Ozolith to put it on a creature. Look, you can even give a creature Pseudo Haste here, if you want, you sack the creature you just played, put the counters at the beginning of combat on your turn onto one that doesn't have summoning sickness attack. You get to put them onto a walking ballista. This is pretty nuts. A mana base, pretty straightforward, green, black. Uh, but now we get to the other Akori edition. Luris of the Dream Den. You're seeing the cat nightmare, cat nightmare everywhere. Say that two times fast. And uh, uh, it's pretty good in this deck, as it turns out, that our entire deck with these X mana costs meets the requirement. And we are able to play all of this stuff out of the graveyard. Luris is a really, really fun card. Look, I know that companions are everywhere right now. They were 80% of the day two metagame at the last Magic Fest online. But hey, I actually think they're pretty cool. Uh, they're fun to play with. They don't change what our deck is outside of the deck building restriction. We just have access to Alluris every game. And while it is very good, it's by no means unbeatable, especially in a format like Pioneer. So, uh, Cyborg, Deadweights, Caustic Caterpillars, Grafdiggers Cages, Scavenging Oozes, Damping Spheres. One thing you'll notice is that uh, all of those are things you can play with Alluris after Cyborging. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, Abrupt Decays, uh, where you need them here. Uh, Barrier Breach, you gotta kill some enchantments, you can do it. Also cycles and exiles, it's pretty nice. So, this is the deck, everybody. It is time to play with some counters. Ozolith, Hardened Scales, Tribal Constructs, whatever you want to call it. Look, I played a lot of, uh, Hardened Scales Constructs back in the day in Modern, before Hardened Scales Affinity or whatever, just Hardened Scales sort of became a deck. I was one of the first people to find a list that uh, had 5 would a Magic Online event with, with a bunch of constructs and, and try it out. So uh, I love these kinds of decks and I'm excited to give this one a shot here on Punting Pioneer, everybody. So here we go. Let's jump into the games. Hey, everybody. Here we go with Hardened Scales Constructs. And you know what? We've got Hardened Scales, so I think we're supposed to keep this one. Uh, before we get into the episode this week, I do want to shout something out. I don't do this too often, but uh, I am part of a new show on the Wizards of the Coast official magic channel uh, called The Advantage Bar. It's uh, other people you might have heard of on the show are Riley Knight, Maria Bartoldi, uh, Cedric Phillips, Corey Baumeister. So every week we get on, we talk standard, we talk what's new, we talk the Magic Fest, all the results of the weekend, plus what to do moving forward. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you like following those people, go check out The Advantage Bar on Wizards Channel. All right, enough of that. Back to this. It is time for Punting Pioneer and Hardened Scales. Here we go. Uh, all right, so my opponent on blue red something. Looks like they mulliganed. Good for us. Uh, I'm going to pull out this Loris here so I don't forget about it later on. It seems extremely good in this deck. I won't lie. Uh, it is a very strong card. Okay, so Blooming Marsh into Hardened Scales. So don't know what our opponent's up to here, but I got to say with Metallic Mimic and Walking Ballista, now I would have felt better on the play, but we do have a strong hand here. Now, these Fatal Pushes may or may not be dead, depending on what our opponent's doing, and that uh, could be pretty relevant, but we'll see what happens. All right, the old shock pass, huh? Okay, ooh, 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Ozolith. I want to play this card so badly. Uh, that said, I do think it is uh, likely correct here to just play out this Metallic Mimic. So we'll do that first. Naming Construct, by the way. You know, maybe there's an argument to to play an Ozolith there. I don't think so, though. Look, my opponent is probably going to either counter or kill this card. And that's what it is. You got to... Or get censored, I suppose. So that does count as a counter. Um, but now we get to untap. We get to play Walking Ballista. Then we get to play the Ozolith. So... Uh, or rather the other way around. That way, if our opponent does have removal for Ballista, we get to put the counters onto the Ozolith, right? That's pretty nice. Does this say... Uh, okay, it says creature, not not permanent. Uh, all right, we'll see if we get to resolve it this time around. Hmm. Yeah, the Ozolith is just the, the less important, so I, I would like to play around Sensei here by playing out this Hangerback Walker. I think that's, that's, that's just got to be the right call here, and if we end up losing... Our Ozolith to another sensor, and that means my opponent didn't draw a card off of it. Fair enough, right? Uh, this is an annoying one for them, though. We'll see what they do about it here. They have no companion that I can tell. Why? Well, they're going to disallow the Hangerback Walker. Okay. That is an expensive counterspell to use on a Hangerback Walker. We're going to resolve the Ozolith now. Uh, I guess we'll see if our... I mean, I say it, it was, uh, you know, kind of... An interesting decision on their part. I like playing this card. This card's cool. It's kind of like Tails End and Standard. Rig. Got a lot of different things you can do with this. Countering abilities really give some flexibility to your counter spells. But uh, that was mana positive for us, and that's why we were able to, to resolve the Ozolith here. So, uh, all right, well, I guess we're just going to keep playing around Sensor because if we keep drawing cards, it makes more sense to play this way. So, there you go. Steel Overseer resolves. Do. Wow, and our opponent did nothing. Okay, so I, I still don't know what our opponent's up to with their Jeskai deck over here exactly. Um, I don't know, probably combo deck maybe? I don't know. I don't know with Disallow and Sensor over there, but uh, we resolved the creature. We've got some good permanents in play. They're going to need to do something here, or uh, this Walking Bullets is going to be a little bit of a nightmare when it comes down. All right. It's a full-cost Conclave Tribunal. Has Convoke. They didn't Convoke. They have no creatures to Convoke. What are they going to hit with it? I, I can only assume it's going after the Seal Overseer. Wow, they're going to hit the Hardened Scales instead. Okay. Sure, I guess. This does trigger when a creature leaves, not just dying, which is uh, uh, which is pretty nice. Wow, a Winding Constrictor, huh? Oh, Ballista or Constrictor. I think I'm going to go with the Constrictor here. Just put these counters on here now. I think this is correct, um, given that we didn't, you know, we don't have that fourth lane, so I can't look to double spell next turn. I like playing Contractor here. It puts the Seal Overseer out of, I, I guess, shock range. I don't know what too damn, but Wild Slash or what have you, right? There, there's certainly removal spells my opponent could have that getting to that three toughness immediately could be more relevant. But also this means if we do resolve a Ballista, it's going to be better, right? So that's, uh, wow, okay. Now things are getting interesting here. Uh... I guess I'll start by just casting this. X equals one. Okay, well, I, I think we're in the clear here. I don't know what my opponent's doing. I don't know what they could have, but I do know that we've got a lot going on. Uh, I'm just gonna get in with the Constrictor though. I wanna activate the Steel Overseer. All right, so now we can do something pretty cool. We can do this, I, I, actually, I wanna make sure this works right, but uh, Oh, maybe this doesn't work the way. It works with Metallic Mimic, I believe, but not with this. Yeah, so I could cast a Walking Ballista for zero, which would usually leave it dead when it comes into play, but with Metallic Mimic, it would get a counter. I don't believe it works quite the same <laughs> with Walking Ballista, or with uh, Winding Constrictor. So I almost walked into that one there. Uh, fortunately, I did not. But, I mean, look at this. We have one Walking Ballista in play already. Our opponent, I have no idea what they're doing, but they're pretty much doing nothing right now. We get to activate... Seal Overseer again. That puts four counters on the Ballista. We just start pinging our opponent. They're down to 11. We have another one in hand. And here you go. My opponent's going to Wild Slash this. And it's just not even going to work out well for them at all. This thing's going to go up to, uh, to four counters thanks to Ballista. Or thanks to the Constrictor here. Uh, and this won't be able to kill it. Two damage to any target, not good enough. So this is uh, problematic for my opponent. They're going to need a second one here. <laughs> they don't have it. They, they didn't have much they could do. They're going to scoop. All right. Fair enough. I like it. Uh, well, I guess we play the Barrier Breach. We saw the Conclave Tribunal. Honestly, that's all I saw from my opponent. Sensors, Disallows, and Conclave Tribunals. Not really sure what they're even doing over there. But uh, give this a shot, right? What to cut? What to cut? 
Probably cut a Stone Cold Serpent here. And uh, I really have no idea what to cut. Fatal Push? We didn't see really any creatures from our opponent, but I mean, you know, I say that. They have Convoke spells. Surely there's creatures in there, right? I guess we're going to find out uh, here in game two. I don't know if I want any of the rest of this. Uh, we'll see what they're up to. I, I won't lie. I, uh, I've i been doing a lot of digging into Standard recently with, with everything going on, so I have not really kept up on Pioneer since Ikoria, so we're figuring it out. I know I love Luris. I know Luris goes into a lot of decks. The card is uh, just so good in Eternal formats where you don't mind playing cards with converted mana cost two or less because those are the ones that are good anyways in, in really uh, streamlined efficient formats like Pioneer or, or Modern or Legacy even, you know, <laughs> Vintage. Loris was all over Vintage, right? The card clearly is pretty ridiculous, and uh, we'll see what happens moving forward with it. But I'm enjoying it, at least in Standard and Pioneer. I think it's a perfectly reasonable uh, effect in, in those. So here we go. I think I'm in. Um, it is a different kind of hand for sure, but it is the kind of hand that can grind pretty well against our opponent uh, thanks to the evolutionary leap if we see them uh, going that route again. So uh, I suppose we'll find out here. Yeah. You see a Overseer, not bad. Now, you know, maybe I should have... Well, I guess it doesn't... It could matter. There's an argument to be made. I should have just played the Stone Cold Serpent for one. I mean, what's my opponent going to do? Play a... Are they going to shock it? They're going to shock it if I play it for two anyways. Um, but... It, with that in play, I then could have played the Steel Overseer on turn two uh, and been able to activate it immediately to get that Serpent up and start hitting. So, And if my opponent uses the removal on the Serpent, they're not using it on the, the Overseer. And, and I guess, you know, then I only have a 1-1 one, one left over if they just shock the Overseer. But Evolutionary Leap means I could have done something with it. So I actually think I, I, I probably should have just played that one of those untapped lands uh, and played out the the stone cold serpent look I, I like i said in the intro i've played a fair amount of these decks before but i have not played it since stone cold serpent uh nor have i played it a ton in pioneer specifically so uh obviously we'll see what happens here see if i get punished but uh winding constrictor here is is not bad now i'm running this out because i suspect my opponent has removal and i want to protect the overseer um it is a little bit of a calculated risk obviously the overseer is the better one to have uh if i get to untap but Something tells me that's probably not going to happen. I wanted to play out the Constrictor here, uh, try to, to eat some of their removal. And here you go. It's just an actual unsummon. So uh, I'm in. You know what? Unsummon is a, a surprisingly reasonable card in a lot of scenarios. You know, it's not a Path to Exile. It's not a Lightning Bolt or their Pioneer equivalents. But uh, it does deal with Stone Cold Serpent, which, by the way, in, in this mess of words on it, it has protection for multicolored. Cannot be bounced by Teferi. You've actually seen a lot of this in Standard right now. It's a... Really powerful card. Uh, okay, so we got plenty of mana this game. So my opponent is almost certainly going to counter whatever we do. So what? With that said, what do we want to do? I think I. I, mean, I, th I think it's got to be the Constrictor, right? My opponent disallows the Constrictor. Then I probably will play the Stone Cold Serpent for one here. Uh, and then next turn I'll play Overseer and Evolutionary Leap. But almost certainly going to get a counter spell here. Yep, we're going to get disallowed. But see, if I had run out that Stone Cold Serpent on turn one, we would have already got in for, for several points of damage here. And and I think, again, I don't know exactly what my, my opponent's up to. It appears to basically be Jeskai Control. Um, then no companions involved. But just poking in for one with a card that's you know not going to be Deafening Clarion to way, not going to be Teferi Bounce or any of these cards that they could reasonably have... I think we would have got a lot of mileage out of it on turn one. So something to keep in mind for yourself moving forward. Um, with that said, I guess it's time to attack. <laughs> Get in there for one. My opponent flashes in a monocolored creature. We're in trouble. All right, we're safe. Uh, okay, so... I honestly don't know which one of these I care about more. It's probably the Evolutionary Leap. So I'm going to lead with the Overseer. My opponent has to counter this. Um, wow. <laughs> or maybe they don't, right? Uh, I'm going to play a Ballista here. So I'm playing the Ballista because one counter, two counters, doesn't really matter if we get to untap with it, which it looks like we will. Uh, I did not want to get a, an Evolutionary Leap censored. Uh, and I also want to play Evolutionary Leap when I can activate it immediately. It only takes one mana to activate it. So our opponent needs a board wipe. 
here. And if they have a board wipe, well, fair enough. That's that's pretty good for them. But then we get to fight back with a Ballista and an Evolutionary Leap uh, with our opponent at three cards in hand. Okay, so there's there it is. We'll pick him down. And keep in mind, the, the other thing you, you with Luris, not only is it an eighth card in hand, it's it's better than an eighth card in hand. And that's why Companions and in particular Luris are so good. But yeah, I got three for one from that Cleansing Nova. That sucks. But on the other hand, I'm just going to play this later with the ability to play something out of my graveyard immediately. So it's an eighth card in your hand. But in terms of spells you cast, it's basically an eighth and a ninth. And uh, obviously more every turn after that. So that's why it's a uh, very powerful card, as it turns out. And we're going to have a powerful turn here. We're going to play Evolutionary Leap uh, plus a Ballista. i got to make sure I leave open green mana here, but uh, should be able to do that. And we need it, too, because... Uh, we, we are flooding out. This Luris is going to have some work uh, to put in here. But I, I do feel pretty reasonable about where we're at. I can uh, evolutionary leap away the Ballista if we need to at any point here. Uh, I can also just untap for my turn and have a creature in play. Uh, we've got some work to do, but we've got a shot. Let's see what my opponent... All right, it is the Teferi. Now, I say we have a shot. Nothing in shot... Nothing, nothing stops shots more than Teferi does because... The card is one of the only, it's one of the scariest planeswalkers on a board like this because it immediately starts drawing cards. It immediately allows them to hold up interaction. It's just an enormously powerful planeswalker. Uh, and once it hits the battlefield, it can be very difficult to come back because generally, you know, I'm happy to play the attrition game. I have, I have Luke, uh, I'm sorry, I have Luris. I can access all these cards from my graveyard, and that is great. But uh, Teferi allows people to keep up and it builds switch something. So all it takes is we flood out over here. Um, is Teferi into removal, and you just run that for a few turns, and there's nothing we can do about it. So uh, we'll see what happens here. I mean, look, we're just going to have to poke this thing down. It, it's painful. It does not feel very good, I'll tell you that much. But uh, I'm going to play this. I'm going to play Luris. And the, the hope here is that I can play another Walking Ballista for one, again while playing around Sensor, slash keeping up Evolutionary Leap. Now, if my opponent just counters this, things start to get a little more problematic for us. Unfortunately, that looks like what's going to happen. Yeah, just the basic uh, Jeskai control deck here. Putting in some work against us, I won't lie. Um, this Walking Ballista trying to take on the world right now, and I don't know if contracts are made for that. <laughs> it's a... Uh, not known for their adaptability, and uh, we got to try to take out this Teferi. I don't know. We'll see if they if they hit anything. We're basically them having one removal spell or or another counter spell at this point away from being dead. So, you know, another option I could have taken. I could have the the Teferi was at five. I could have swung. I could have pumped the Walking Bliss and put two counters on it, put it down to three. I don't I don't know if that would have been good. Um, as the elite guard mage hits. My opponent has got a an extremely grindy, fair deck. This is about as fair as it gets, to be honest. Search for Ascanta, elite guard mage. And Teferi probably qualifies as unfair, but everything else here... I don't know. This one seems like we might be off to game three pretty quickly here. Uh, four cards in the graveyard. We see uh, a Search for Ascanta. But now I know what I'm playing against, so that'll help uh, as well. I mean... This is just a big flood. This is a lot of flood. There's really not a lot we can do here. To be quite honest, I guess I'll just sack this. See what we go find. I mean, Metallic Mimic is not going to get the job done. All right, I concede. On to game three. All right, I like the scavenging newses a little more here. Uh, the Abrupt Decays. I mean, I wish they were Assassin's Trophies, kind of, but uh, they are Abrupt Decays. Cage is no good here. Push the pushes are are pretty bad. Uh, Elite Guard Mage costs four. I mean, we're not likely to be able to kill that very often. Um, get this back in here, I guess. And the other scoos. I, I suppose this is a, a strategy. Let's see what we can do here. Well, we actually roll. I mean, folks, we rolled in game one. Uh, we did not <laughs> do so in game two. We got kind of stomped, frankly. So uh, let's see what we can do here in game three. I mean. This costs a caterpillar up here. I just don't know what else I'd do with it, though. I think it's a reasonable one. Look, Search for Ascanta will win the game. We, it's, it's, it's basically the more powerful version of Castle Vantress in that scenario, right? They both take a three to four mana investment. 
uh, but then they gain you value. And I know in standard, it always feels like if your opponent ever gets the turn where you have to pass and they get a scry on your incept, you're, you're in trouble. And that's exactly how Search for Ascont is. The first time they activate that card, you're probably just dead. Uh, so with that said, let's see if we can get out a, a little faster here and see if we can get ahead of the Teferi and all of that now. There are exactly four basic swamps in this deck, and this is three of them. So that is just straight unlucky right there. Uh, I do think I'll be keeping this one, though. I think Serpent's the worst. Hard to say. I mean, it's possible Serpent's better than Ballista here. But uh, with my opponent having Planeswalkers, with us having the Hardened Scales, I, I want the ability to actually do damage to them. Uh, because my opponent's going to have board wipes. Now, the good news for us is that we, we actually mulligan into a pretty decent hand here. I mean, we're going to get to play uh, a Seal Overseer. My opponent shocked in this team event, so they, they obviously have removal. So... Um, I guess we got to decide what we want to do about that. I think the answer is to just play the hanger back. I mean, my opponent, I guess they could just have an opt or something, but shocking in like that, it's, it's gotta be a, a wild slash. And you know what? They can wild slash just hanger back walker. Then I have two. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So then I'll have two one ones, right? So that, it just seems perfectly reasonable to me. They, the, the hanger back deals them two damage by making them shock. Uh, then we get to keep bodies around. I suppose none of these things beat Unsummon, so it's kind of a moot point. Remember Unsummon? This is actual card disadvantage, right? But my opponent had that Unsummon last game, and it was pretty clutch. I mean, frankly, just having the ability to interact for one mana outside of your Wild Slashes, I guess has some value, because it has wrecked us thus far. Uh, all right, let's play the Mutable here with the Urborg. It'll even make colored mana if we need it to. Um... All right, well, I guess if that's what my opponent showed me this time, I'm playing the... I thought it was going to be Wild Slash. I guess if it's not Wild Slash, if it could be on summon, I'm just going to play the, this Seal Overseer here. I mean, the thing is, too, the other reason I like that, that Hangerback Walker is it has the most uh, value of any of these sort of X creatures in play because you can actually activate to put a counter on it, and then it's board wipe protection. And given that my opponent is playing board wipes, that's it's kind of the most important card, which is why I ran it out before it could get censored. Um, we're going to get Lava Coiled here instead. Uh, but I'm glad that didn't hit the hanger back walker. Yeah, I wanted to play around sensor, and then this last turn when my opponent, you know, could have something like that up, uh, then I don't, I don't want to do it. So now, I think I like this. I think I like. We're in the same situation. My opponent has tap down mana on their turn, uh, but now we get to get this thing out of even wild slash range. We, we sure it could get unsummoned again, but if it gets unsummoned, it gets unsummoned, right? That's uh, just the way it goes. But that said, it resolves. It's a 3-3 three, three, thanks to Hardened Scales. If my opponent does have a board wipe, we'll get the tokens out of it. And we're still sitting on a Ballista and a Mute Vault here, so we are much, much better. It is an Unsummon. All right, we're getting Unsummoned to this game. I guess that fills the graveyard for a search for Ascanta. Uh, but what I was going to say is, I think we're better off against Teferi here, but man, look at this now. Maybe we're just not. This is uh, this is kind of kind of ridiculous, frankly. Um... All right, well, now my opponent has counter spells open, so I I think it's Ballista. I, this is going to get countered. I think it's, well, no, because of that, it has to be Hanger Back Walker. So, all right, so here's my thought. If my opponent has a counter spell, and then I, I'm looking at the worst case scenario, and that's counter spell into Teferi. I need the Ballista to shoot the, to, to interact with the Teferi once I tap out. The Hangerback Walker is not getting it done. My opponent's deck is full of cards they can cast off of an untap from a Teferi. This is going to eat a counter spell, and it sucks. But look, if if I play the the Ballista there, it gets countered instead. Sure. Then my opponent plays Teferi. Uh, that's bad for us. And the thing is, if we resolve the Hangerback there, and my opponent has Teferi, they just get a minus the the Teferi to eat the Hangerback. Uh, and then I get a swing back at it with a Mutavolt. So that's why I liked that line there. Um, as opposed to my opponent tucking the, the Ballista or something. So now my opponent has a Monastery Mentor. This game is bizarre. Their deck is, I won't lie, it's actually, actually kind of sweet. But uh, it's been an interesting game, that is for sure. So, I mean, look, I don't think I have any choice but to play this thing for two. Hope that if this, if we, we're playing around Sensor. If this doesn't resolve, if my opponent has another timely answer here we're just gonna die so 
That said, I have to just try to kill this Monastery Mentor. Now, the good news for us is it has prowess, so even if they go for something in response here, we'd be able to lose our Ballista to kill it. But it looks like after working our way through the counter magic, the unsummons, the removal spells, we might have finally turned the corner there. My opponent went for the Monastery Mentor, and we had the answer to it because we saved our walking Ballista. Hanging back Walker would not have got that done. Still would have been very good, especially with the Evolutionary Leap in play, but Monastery Mentor is a heck of a card, so... I, uh, I like the way this worked out for us much, much better. Getting of the Trials, huh? That's a good one. All right, so until their next turn, our Ballista will deal no damage. That means we also cannot remove counters to deal damage. That is how that, that, is how that works. So let's see what that means here. We got plenty of mana. I think I probably fire up the Muta Vault. After that, I have five mana open, which is enough to put counters on this thing again. That's got to be the... Wait, can I kill this in their upkeep? I might be able to. Because look, I can turn the Muta Vault into a creature. I like this. I like where we're going now. Now we're getting somewhere. I get it, well, at least uh, my opponent still has two open mana, I suppose. But it didn't do anything to us last turn. I get to attack the Gideon for two. The, the one Muta Vault in this deck doing work right now. I, I get to put that to two. Then I get to... Pay four mana. Put a counter on the walking ballista. Thanks to the hardened skills, it becomes two counters. Now, remember, it deals no damage to my opponent's next turn, but we're going to move to the instep here. We're going to go to my opponent's upkeep. And now we're going to use those counters to take out this Gideon. Now, my opponent could still have lots of cards that are very good against us. We're not necessarily in a perfect spot. Something like Teferi with a removal spell would still get us if they're able to deal with the Muta Vault. Look, we're not out of the woods yet, but we took down the Monastery Mentor. We took down the Gideon. We saved this Ballista in our hand the entire game, and now we are getting absolutely rewarded for it. This feels... It feels pretty good after getting stomped in Game 2, but again, a long way to go. Super friends it up, buddy. Royal Scions over there. Maybe they'll give my creature plus two in first. No? Okay. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna loot. Uh, if, you ha if you hadn't guessed, though, this is obviously great for us. I can untap. I can just basically run the same line again, except now I get to attack with my Ballista. One card in hand for my opponent. Things are looking up over here. Now, there are 20 life. We've got a long way to go, but uh, we certainly seem to be on the right track. Now, uh, go ahead and just do this, I suppose. Let's see if it works. Seems like it. Yeah, this is just... Uh, if, if this attack gets through, I, I feel very good. I Even at that point, Teferi's probably the scariest thing they could have, and I just don't know if that's going to be good enough. Walking Ballista, doing that thing where it's just incredibly powerful. We, we're now used it to eat two Planeswalkers from our opponent. They are gasping for air over there. Meanwhile, we have a Muta Vault to take out Teferi if they do land Teferi to deal with our Ballista. And if they just kill the Ballista, well, I guess that's bad for us too. And it, but we have the Evolutionary Leap. We have a Cycling card. Uh, we've got some some ways to rebuild here. So we'll see. This is They need an answer. We'll see what they got. It is the Teferi. This is just, this game is just, it feels good. You know, look, I make a lot of plays. See the, well, other way. See the whiteboard? I'm just all over. There we go. Eh, 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 eh. Um, it's reversed here. Over there. It's called Punting Pioneer for a reason. But occasionally I do play well, and I feel like I've played pretty well this game. I was I, I recognized that this was going to be the card as our opponent started getting, you know, on one, two mana, Hangerback Walker is what we wanted. Four or five mana, we want to deal with this Teferi. So uh, it was most important to have access to our Walking Ballista for that. Uh, so here we go. Uh, all that said, you know, my opponent does have a card in hand. They do have access to three mana right now. I'm going to try to just ride this Walking Ballista to victory, but... Uh, if they have an answer to the Ballista, we don't get to take out the Teferi, yeah, we could still be in trouble, right? We're not out of the woods by, by any stretch of the imagination here. Um, that said, let's just run the same playback. I mean, look, this is, this is an interesting kind of way this game is playing out because, well, let me go ahead and do this. I, I think this is going to work, so, um... All right, looks like looks like we're good to go here. Teferi probably biting the dust. I assume we're in the clear at this point. Uh, that that feels good. Okay, so 
But this game was interesting because my opponent did... We answered the threats. The Monastery Mentor, Gideon, Royal Scions, Teferi. We answered them all. Obviously, we're in a great spot. But it did tie up... What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six mana every turn. Just to try to, to, to keep pace on the board. Um, and we don't get to advance our board state at all. That, you know, obviously... That said here... Our opponent is uh, uh, drowning right now. They 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 had some windows to get there, but they did not draw their cards in the right order, or they didn't draw the cards when they needed them to. And now this walking ballista and hardened scales. Because look, walking ballista is getting all the credit here, but it's just hardened scales hanging out doing all the work over here. It's, it's just taking over the game. And and now I think it's going to be, uh, frankly, probably pretty difficult to lose here. Um, let's see. How do I want to play it though? I have access to four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I could just turn my Walking Bliss into a 6-6 six, six if I wanted, but I think the play is going to be to uh, attack with a Ballista. I think I'm just going to let it go through. I don't think I'm going to put any mana into it. I think I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to go for 1, 2, 3, 4 on the Hangerback Walker. This should... Give us a 3-3 three, three hanger back. Now, the thing is, my opponents had removal. This, or I'm sorry, had a card in hand for the last several turns, and they've had mana open. We just haven't played any spells. So, would not be at all surprised if it were a counter spell over there. Uh, and, in fact, it is. Uh, so, that that seems fine, though. Our opponent's officially out of cards now. And that's why I ran out the hanger back walker. It is very good, but given our opponent's playing exile effects, I actually valued it a little less than this evolutionary leap. I wanted to resolve the evolutionary leap, uh, and now I have. So... Hopefully we don't have to turn our walking ballista into a uh, into a into a something else. But uh, looks like our opponent might have whiffed something like a fairy. There still would have been maybe a little bit problematic. But now I think the coast is clear, and I'm going to go ahead and thought seize just to verify. Yeah, I mean you don't play thought seize to not thought seize your opponent, right? I'm probably just going to keep this thing in my hand. I don't think I need to cycle it. I think I can just use Mutavault, Ballista, Evolutionary Leap shenanigans at this point to, to advance the get our board state towards killing our opponent now that we've worked through the Planeswalkers uh, without having to make a decision between Exiling and Cycling. Because maybe my opponent, you know, plays some enchantment that we really need to get rid of or whatever, right? Until I'm actually at a position where I need a different card that I need to find by cycling this, I'm not going to cycle it. So, uh, that said... There's a Thoughtseize he's on the stack, and our opponent is in the tank. So, that either means they've got a very interesting decision to make, or they're just upset that uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to get them here. Uh, I mean, imagine if, we're, if we drew Thoughtseize and they've got Settle the Wreckage or something over there that really actually would have been a pretty clean answer to Walking Ballista, at least as clean as anything would have been. But as it turns out, they just have nothing, so yeah, I guess that's okay, too. Uh, all right, I think this works. I think I have enough mana to do everything I want here. In fact, I have the perfect amount of mana because, uh, hey, sometimes things just work out. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, pump this thing up again. Make it a 4-4. Get in for 6 damage. The beatdown begins at my opponent this time. But the, the nice thing here is that we have exactly the 1 mana open to activate the Evolutionary Leap. So, look, if my opponent has an answer to Walking Ballista, I ping them for three, and then I get to turn it into a new creature with the leap. This is a, a very good, very, very good spot for us. There's the card. Yep. Well, you know what? That is a card, and that is an interesting draw because Search for Ascanta uh, is a good one, right? That is a very, very powerful card. Um, so we knew about the Steam Vents. I, did I miss a different card? I thought they just had the one Steam Vents. They played a search and a... I must have missed something. They must not have played a land. I I, I just saw them tap this and thought it came into play. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I got momentarily confused. Sometimes I talk and miss what's going on in the game. My opponent's just going to play the land out anyways. So, all right. Uh, let's think this one through here. Do I just have lethal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can turn this thing into an eight, eight. That's just lethal. Something to remember when it comes to walking ballista. Sometimes just putting counters on it is more effective than anything else. When you start talking hardened scales and uh, constrictors and things like that, you just get to kind of live the dream here. Just go all in on this walking ballista, dump eight mana into it, turn it into an eight eight. 
Uh, and that is lethal due to the particular brokenness of this card. Uh, because Search for Ice Content was, would have been problematic several turns ago. One of those, that turn that they played that that second Monastery Mentor and we were able to kill it. Imagine if that had been a Search for Ice Content. At that point, we were still a long way from turning the corner. They had mana to activate it. Sarko find answers. I mean, we could have been in trouble there. Uh, as it turns out, though, things Worked out for us. They had everything in game two. We had everything in game three. Uh, but I think we also played well. Because look, I mean, this could have been a hangerback walker now. And that would have been good, clearly. But it might not have won the game. And that walking bliss certainly did. So there you go, everybody. Luris Constructs taking it down. That was great. Let's uh, let's jump into some more games here. All right, here we go. Trying to pick up another win with our Luris Constructs deck. Not going to do it with this hand, though. Uh... Let's see if we do any better the second time around. Our opponent kept seven. This is a keeper for us. In fact, I like this hand a lot. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to ship back a Mimic here. We get a Thoughtseize on our opponent. We're on the draw, uh, so that's a little unfortunate. But we get a Thoughtseize on our opponent, <laughs> and then we get a Steel Overseer, Steel Overseer, turn three, Hardened Scales, Mimic. Uh, we've got some options here, and I, I love that we get to start things off uh, by attacking our opponent's hand. Watery Grave tapped. Looks like we're probably playing against, what do you say? Might be Demir Inverter? Uh, this is actually a pretty medium hand for my opponent here. They don't have the fastest Oracle. I've got a Fatal Push. But this is also a 6-6. Six, six. They just have very little going on over there. I'm actually just going to take the Fatal Push and try to kill them, I think. I, I think that they don't, they're not, they don't have a combo hand right now. They have a hand that had removal. It's got lands, and they've got I mean, sure, yeah, they've got the uh, the the Inverter of Truth in here, but Inverter of Truth is a liability until you have the combo set up. Um, so I'm going to take that off. Wow, our, we're just going to go crazy in a few turns, too. So I take the removal spell. I play the Steel Overseer. Unless my opponent got lucky and drew an answer to this, uh, or this turn, or I guess next turn, we're just going to, it's just going to take over the game, right? They could obviously opt into a Fatal Push here, et cetera, but next turn... We're going to go Hardened Scales, Hardened Scales, Activate Seal Overseer, put three counters on it. Or, I guess maybe what I'm more likely to do is play one Hardened Scales and a Metallic Mimic so I can actually add to my board a little bit. But the thing is, the, the Inverter of Truth can kind of be an issue sometimes and, and when you stop them from comboing because it's just a 6-6. Six, six. I think it's a 6-6 six, six flyer, right? It's just this incredible threat all by itself. Um, but in, in this case... We can just go bigger than it. Uh, Thought Erasure. Good card here. My opponent's probably going to take this Metallic Mimic. But uh, the thing is, it's just so easy for us to punish our opponent. Um, now, there's a lot of things to get us, too, right? They draw Fatal Push. We only have one creature in play. They hit the Steel Overseer. We're in trouble. But we have the ability to draw a card or two to just really get us. I mean, like for instance, imagine we draw Hangerback Walker right now, right? We draw Hangerback Walker. We have all of this in play. It's going to have a billion counters. The only way my opponent wins at that point is comboing. So uh, same with same with Ballista in all likelihood, right? So uh, we're going to have to get a little lucky. My opponent is kind of stocking their graveyard up with cards here. So if they do find an Oracle, uh, they, they're going to have a pretty nice stack, right? When they flip their graveyard in their library, their library is going to become a, a pretty nice selection of cards over there. Um, you know, with that said, look, we're executing our game plan the way we want to, so it's hard to be too upset with that. All right, so our opponent's hand, I guess we know about now. The, the Drunk Catacomb is out. Uh, I think we know th three of the four, maybe? I'm not sure. Let me just go ahead and do this now. Yeah, I mean, this is going to get big very quickly, right? I, it probably makes sense. To go to seven, then I kill them in three turns with it. Then again, maybe that happens. We just lose it, uh, and we've done no damage. So, I mean, I was thinking about swinging with it at four. Not much of a concern now. I mean, all right, I don't, I don't really know that I like how this game is going for us anymore. I mean, I like that our opponent has nothing but two lands in hand, but... I mean, frankly, we want to be the aggressor. We want to have things in play. We don't want our opponent to be up 20 to 14 on life at, at this point of the game. Now, we have a lot of good draws. So do they, and they're the ones with deck manipulation. We kind of need to get lucky. We need to find 
one of those good draws off the top of our deck. But imagine we do find a Hangerback Walker or a Ballista. I guess Ballista is probably the best one right now. We get to play it out as a, it'd be a 4-4 four, four coming into play. Then you get to put two counters on it every, three counters on it every turn just by activating it. We're in a position where we have top decks that can just outright win the game in a couple turns if our opponent uh, can't answer them. That said, they have a lot of good draws as well. It's the best deck in the format for a reason. They have a Sunken Hollow in hand. Uh, hmm. Now, the other thing to keep in mind for us, by the way, is if we hit lands. That's the big one, because we have access to Loris, remember? Now, four lands with Loris, I don't want to run it out necessarily and hit removal. Maybe I should have, though. Maybe on that turn, I should have just played it and, and if they draw the removal for it, sure, we're going to lose. But we, we kind of put them on that clock. Then we have access to our mana when we untap. But on the other hand, we just let it go. We don't risk that. Now, if we draw uh, a land, I, I guess technically we have to draw a, a non-blooming marsh land. But if we draw an untapped land, we can play Loris and play the Seal Overseer out of our graveyard. Uh, and if we hit anything else, we're going to cast it. So I think all of our options are probably good. I don't know if my opponent is in the tank here because... They have a play or because uh, they're getting a drink going to the bathroom. I don't know. But uh, I have to imagine it'd be pretty straightforward if they had a play here, right? They uh, they have they have a sunken hollow in hand and whatever they drew and we have no cards in hand. It can't be that complicated. Play it out. That said, it could be something like, uh, you know, do, I assume they just play an inverter of truth. But if that's his oracle, there, there could be something to think about here. And in fact, I, I nailed it, Hans. Like I know a little bit about the format, I can figure out what they're thinking of over there. So the answer is Inverter of Truth. So my opponent is putting Fatal Push, Opt Op, Erasure Drown, Inverter into their deck. So this is it now. They, they, they had to make, that was the decision point for them. Do they want to try to play a fair game and win with the 6-6 Flyer and the other one they have in their library uh, or not? And they, they opted to go for it here. So we got we to gotta find an answer. I don't know that we have very many, and this is just, that's that's the actual worst. I, I guess it makes sense. Our deck was very good to us last game. This game, we just get completely punished. I, I named the worst card for us to have, and uh, that's the one we draw. But can't play any of these. That said, I mean, I guess Luris has lifelink. Our opponent's deck is just full of good cards, though. That's the problem, right? Their six-card deck is full of incredible cards. I mean, they either get to opt into removal, they get to just have the removal, they get to have another Inverter of Truth. I think I think they were pretty dead. And this is why Demir Inverter is probably the best deck in the format, because you play the game scared of the combo. Thassa's Oracle, Inverter of Truth, it's a powerful combo, but my opponent's just played a fair game and completely stomped us with it right now. I mean, we're going to need an answer pretty much right here. Ozolith is uh, likely not it, so... I mean, I guess we're going to do what we can do here, but I'm not really sure what our options are. Um, I, my opponent opting into... I mean, they basically... I guess they could have the Drown in the lock right now, but they probably would have used that. I don't know. Uh, it was another Inverter, so I guess it, it could have been a lot worse for us. And you know what? Gaining life with, with the Luris is also pretty relevant. Um, at least it could be relevant. I mean, it puts us above 12 life next turn. They, they had the Fatal Push instead. All right, so Seal Overseer down. Now imagine if that had been a Walking Melissa or a Hangerback Walker. Comes into play with, with two counters. Our opponent Fatal Pushes it. We get to Ozolith. Those counters onto our Luris gain more life. Would have been pretty good, but now my opponent with the two cards in the library, I, I assume that means they have the other Inverter of Truth and are going to kill us uh, with a couple cards left in their library. I think Pioneer is sweet right now. Like, everything else aside, I think it's cool that a deck does this. They had to, my, our opponent had to make a, a calculated decision of whether or not it was correct for them to throw away their entire library and try to win in the next five turns uh, with their 6-6s six that we could just kill or whatever, right? So I, I have to say, I think it's pretty cool that this worked out this way. Um, all right, well, the, the Mimic's free... Can I win? Do I have any way to win here? I just do this. This is going to be, what, a 4-4? Four, four? Pretty big. It's a weird game. Um, I mean, I think we're just dead regardless, though, right? 
Especially since I can't, I don't have a sack outlet for this. So removing the counters from it to, to ping things actually doesn't work. Um, so we have died. That was a close game, but uh, that's the way it goes. So, all right. Demir Inverter. Sure thing. Scavenging news. Yes, please. Fatal push. I mean, fatal push is not the end of the world, right? It's fine. You can hit their... Uh, I mean, you can hit the Oracle with the trigger on the stack. I don't even know if that works. I mean, this card's just not great in the matchup. But there are occasions, especially, remember, we have ev Evolutionary Leap. So no fetch lands, but we can still occasionally trigger uh, Revolt. And we can hit the, the Inverter of Truth with it, with it, which would have been pretty nice in that last one. Ozolith wasn't quite what we wanted in that last game. But you know what? It would have been good early if we just had different... Early creatures with my opponent use their removal on, having a Nozolith would have been, would have been kind of nice. I mean, look, it's very possible to win more in the deck. Even though it's actually, I mean, it's not a win more, right? It, it It's good when your creatures die, which means you're not winning, right? But the, the reality is it, it can be a, a liability. It's a bad, it can be a bad top deck late. If you don't have creatures, it, it doesn't do much. It, so it is certainly a, a, sort of a, a test card in the deck. And uh, we'll have to see by the end of it how we feel about it. Uh, I know how I feel about this hand, though. This hand, this hand is hot. <laughs> this is this is what dreams are made of right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Thoughtseize, Constrictor, Hangerback Walker. I remember this standard. <laughs> okay, not, I guess this is not really standard. Thoughtseize didn't, didn't quite exist back then, but uh, I remember some Constrictor action. This card's fun. This card's just cool. All right, our opponent mulligan as well, so that's, uh, that's nice for us. So let's get things started. Gain ourselves with the Land of War, right? He's well worth it. Lightning Bolt ourselves. I think uh, I'll live with that. Uh, Fatal Push Hero's Downfall, huh? Well, I guess... Wow, my opponent... Well, I mean, they mulligan. I mean, this looks good. This has to look good for us, right? Hero's Downfall is very slow. It costs three mana. They have to... Uh, I mean, let's see. So they have the Choke Dash away. They, they put it in the Flam Tap. I mean, remember we're not the, the, wow, double constrictor. Things are getting silly. It's like a hardened scale that attacks. It's beautiful. Um, and no fatal push for my opponent's going to be a sad day. Turns out Thoughtseize pretty powerful in uh, every format ever. And that's one of the things people have talked about here uh, with companions is that with the companions in the game, it kind of changes things, right? Because... Uh, you can't thought see as a companion out of an opponent's hand. So it kind of weakened discard effects in that sense, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Thought sees is a ubiquitous card across, across Pioneer and Modern, but um, it is an interesting wrinkle. It changed the format and the ways that some of the key cards in the format interacted in a way that almost nothing else could. So look, I'm not saying I'm not going to be tired of everyone having Lurus decks six months from now or whatever, but this shook up magic in a way that is really unique. I think my I think I would have loved a year of standard with these cards and then forgot about them, right? Uh, or occasionally they pop up in modern. I think the fact that they're so easy and just so powerful because everything's so powerful in, in modern magic design, at least in the past you know year and a half or whatever. So I think that we're going to see them for a long time. I, I don't know about bands or anything like that, but they are, they are going to be a staple of eternal formats. It's not just going to be a unique standard. It's going to be a new part of magic. Uh, yeah, adapt and move on whether you like it or not. So, uh, with all of that said here, now what do I do? I think I probably just play the second Constrictor. My, I'm going to let my opponent have a Jace activation because this is the most mana efficient thing for us anyways, is to play the uh, play the Ozolith here, put out the double Constrictor. It means that next turn I can untap, play Blissa for one, that'll make the Blissa three, I can shoot down the Jace. So look, my opponent, they get an activation out of it, but given how bad their hand was... Uh, how bad we knew their hand to be, and in fact still do, might work out fine. Now my opponent has a hero's downfall that I don't really care about. I have two constrictors. Uh, I mean, our hand looks, our hand just frankly looks great here. You know, that that said, we'll see where we get. But we know three of the four cards in our opponent's hand, and one of them is just a removal spell. So uh, I, I should get the opportunity. Hitting this land was, was very key here, uh, quite frankly. Um... This means I should I should still get to kill the Jace even after getting Heroes Downfold on one of these Constrictors. Yep. All right, so Heroes Downfall on one. That's fine. We still get to poke our opponent. And now we get to try to basically take over the game. Uh, Ballista for two. 
really means Ballista for three. It means Dead Jace, which means our opponent has one card we don't know about, one Fabled Passage, and one Island in their hand. That's not particularly powerful. So, And we even have a great card in hand. We have a good reload with Hangerback Walker here. So uh, I, I got to say, feeling pretty good about where we're at right now. Lock could still change. Uh, and we'll see what they want to do here. I mean, they, they we now know only one of the cards in their hand. They have two unknowns. We've got a board they have to care about, but uh, let's see if they, they found some Fatal Pushes or something of the like here. Yep. Fatal Push onto the Ballista. So, I could ping them for one. I'm not going to. I'm going to put this counter on my Ozolith. Let's do it. <laughs> and this is actually... Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. Winding Constrictor also works for your artifacts. What? Okay. Well, I think the jury might be in on Ozolith now because the one counter on that Ballista became two counters on the Ozolith. It's about to become more counters on this Hangerback Walker. This is sweet. I'm having a lot of fun. I won't lie, I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty neat. So, all right, going to play this thing out. X is currently one. Gonna fire up the Muta Vault. And we're gonna get in there. Alright, moving to combat. Make sure I understand this. You may move all counters from it to target creature. So what's there's so in, so many interesting things. I could put them on the hangerback walker. Which is which is a play, which is interesting, right? That's obviously very good. I can also just put it on the Muta Vault. Get in for four this turn, and then have this 4-4 Muta Vault that can only be interacted with at sorcery speed. Now, I'm sorry, at instant speed. I don't know if that really matters. Most of my opponent's removal is probably instant, but is it worth just getting in the extra five points of damage this turn? Or, well, the extra three points of damage, I guess. That would mean we, we swung for seven, which... Okay, so let's, let's think this through. I can swing for seven this turn by two counters going to the Muta Vault. Plus the one from the, the Winding Constrictor. That makes the Mutavolt 5 power Constrictor 7. That puts our opponent down to 7. That's two turns. Alternatively, I put three counters on the hanger back. I swing for four. I put my opponent to 10. I then untap. I have nine power in play. So yeah, I mean, I think that I think that this is the line. Because the thing is, also, if my opponent had some kind of board wipe or, or removal spell or, or whatever, Hanger Rat Walker is still going to be good. Um, so I think that... I. I think that I clicked through my attack stuff. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, punting pioneer, everybody. All right, my opponent's going to do... Oh, my gosh. We could add my opponent at seven. Oh. Misclicks are a thing. Misclicks are sure a thing. You know what? Everyone makes them, though. It's Punting Pioneer. I don't hide games, friends. I don't play 10 matches and show you the best three or four. I play three or four matches, and we figure it out as we go. And Misclicks are a part of life. So be mad at me if you want for misclicking. I'm sorry if this lessens your enjoyment of my Punting Pioneer series that you get to watch for free on YouTube every week. I'm sorry if my misclick has worsened your day in any way. Because it certainly made my night slightly worse. Slightly worse. Although, maybe we'll win this game anyways and it won't matter. Alright. You know, that said, the fact that my opponent's opting in their main phase is, is probably a good sign. Um, not that I, I... It's hard to win when your opponent... Once you skip your attack step and your opponent digs through time, it, it is hard to win, but... We'll see what we can do here. And, and here you go. Um, now, this exiles the hanger back. That still puts the counters here on the Ozolith. So that whole play uh, plan of interacting it, only being able to interact with this Mutavolt in certain ways, well, worked out pretty well there. Ah, we drew another hanger back. Okay, well, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it better this time. That's the plan. <laughs> Same, but better. Also, this is just still a thing that we're doing, by the way. <laughs> we now get to put four count. I'm not missing it this time. It was the o Ozolith trigger that messed me up last time. I clicked too much. Because, see, I didn't have to click through begin combat like I usually do. That's the muscle memory of clicking through be begin combat. Because I had a trigger, once the trigger resolved, it automatically took me to this. So that's that's We've identified where we screwed up. 
Now we'll just try not to do it again. Uh, but it's, fa it's Fatal Push or Bust for my opponent, though. Even with all of that, I mean, they're at three. We'll play another Hanger Back Walker. This Ozolith is doing its thing right now. Um, this card is... I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure about it coming in, but and I wanted to know. And now we know because it's going to win us this game. I mean, obviously the synergy with Constrictor is stupid because we're just basically multiplying counters and whatnot here. But now with this Hanger Back Walker, let's say my opponent has a board wipe. We get to put a billion counters on the Ozolith. We get to have a Thopter or Mutavolt to begin the next combat to dump them all on. You don't even have to use this. It's a May ability, so I don't have to load up my Mutavolt to get Fatal Pushed. I mean, it's a pretty powerful card uh, in a situation like this. We, by the way, also still have this Evolutionary Leap in our hand. Uh, my opponent's digging in the main phase. They're just dead, right? They're, we have three lethal attackers. Well, I guess that's not quite true. We have two lethal attackers. So they're not technically dead, I guess. They could... Find double fatal push, push the constrictor and the mutavolt, go to one. Nope, scooped. What misclick, YouTube? I see you in the comments. What misclick? No misclicks here. We won the game. Is that revisionist history? Maybe. Is it called Punting Pioneer? It is. Am I pointing at the wrong side of my face because I can't do reverse? Apparently. Anyways, game three. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. That was a fun one, though. That was a fun match. I, I gotta say, this matchup seems fun. I, I Again, not played a lot of it, but I think Demir Inverter is basically a very good fair deck. It's a combo deck, so it's not fair in that sense, but it is not broken or anything like that, but it's just very good. It kind of reminds me of long time ago modern, right? Back in the day modern, the heyday of modern, the golden age, when I, I loved the format. I have seven modern decks. I was always building something new, breaking it. Now modern's just more or less solved, right? It's just the power level of the new cards is so high, you're not going to discover something old, you know? That's that's kind of what I, I think hurts me the most about the the power level increase over the past year and a half. It's not that these cards are, are broken or too good or whatever. Some of them are. I'll go once upon a time, etc. But some of them aren't, right? Some of them are are just good, but we don't, because everything is just pushed up. Even if it's not broken, it's just so good that you're not really going to find an old deck, you know, the Kragenwick Cremator deck or, or something crazy like that that uses an old card. Now the only way that old cards can ever really muster anything is basically to be a part of a combo. Um, it's chronic flooding, flooding, that sort of thing, because you're not just going to discover new decks at this point in modern. And the thing is, we got Pioneer, and I kind of hoped we'd get that in Pioneer, but instead Pioneer is kind of like Standard, where what is Standard defined by? The most recent set. Standard all about companions right now. So is Pioneer. So is Modern. The new cards are just so good that they, they said they wanted to increase the power level. People like to play with powerful cards. I agree. I do too. Um, but uh, I have to say, the heyday of Modern was back then when you were just always discovering something new. I, I really liked uh, that, that time period, as I think most people did. Um, so I don't even... There was probably a point to that story. <laughs> It's, forgive me. I'm sure I had a point when I started. Uh, it's been lost to the sands of time. This hand, by the way, back to this game. This hand seems nice. My opponent's opting. I'm going to get to play Constrictor next turn. I'm actually probably going to play the Overseer. Just kind of put the question to them. Because it's the one that needs to untap. If they have the Fatal Push, which you always assume that they do, that's fine. And they have the Fatal Push. Um... But I honestly, I think I might rather have the Overseer Fatal Push than the Winding Constrictor because the Winding Constrictor uh, has three toughness, which can matter. My opponent, by the way, did not have the removal spell, uh, which is great for us. This is the highest upside play on turn two if we do get to untap. Um, and as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, things just went very poor. Things just turned very badly for my opponent right there. This was... Uh, this was a little bit of a blowout for them, frankly, because uh, unless they have something I don't know about, I mean, they got a fatal push that they didn't show us already because walking Ballista for one here, it's going to be two with the Hardened Scales, three with the Overseer. We're going to use it to kill the, the Jace before they get to activate. And look, if you tap out for a, a Jace Friends Prodigy on turn three and then you don't get to activate it, that's not where you want to be <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. So this was disastrous for my opponent already. Um, you know, we'll see where they go from here. They could just combo us to death still, if something like that is possible. But this deck, this Hardened Scales deck, when it gets going, it is it is nice. And Lurus just gives it a late game that it never had. 
I'm trying to remember what I was going to say earlier. I started talking about back in the golden age of modern. I don't know. It's me and the camera. You're not here to help me. I'm sure you're yelling at your screen how dumb I am, how forgetful I am. But hey, me and this camera. All right, so here's the uh, drowning the lock. Uh, this is all... Wow, my opponent's drowning. Drowning the, the ballista instead of the overseer. I, I'm not even saying that's wrong. In fact, it probably isn't. But it is not a good sign for them, right? I'll just say that because... Uh, we we get to do a lot. Land would be great, and I'm just gonna just gonna draw the perfects off the top. I, I love it. Um, you love to see it, so uh, I think the play here is going to be the constrictor into a hanger back. So that way, if my opponent does have say a damnation or something like that, which I don't know if they do. Uh, I, I mean, I guess damnation wouldn't be legal. if they have some kind of board wipe. We'll be. Out of the range, all three creatures cannot be Cry of the Carnarium or anything like that. Also, just removing the Hangerback Walker by anything other than an Exile effect gives us a bunch of creatures. I mean, it, look at this. We we all of a sudden, we have we have 14 power in play right now. We just have lethal. This is just actually lethal. I could swing for 14, uh, play the Walking Ballista, and, and finish them off as it stands now. It's going to be... A similar situation. I mean, not quite the same, but still very, very good for us because I'm just going to go uh, Ballista for two, which is <laughs> really Ballista for like a billion, right? So it should be Ballista for four, if I understand it correctly. Yep, Ballista for four. Uh, activate Seal Overseer, put a million more counters on this thing. You know, four damage to Kalidus Trader of Get, which is generally a bomb in a matchup like this. Uh, you get to just. Uh, you get to eat their creatures. It's got lifeling. It's just an incredibly difficult card to beat. Unless, I guess, you're us doing this. In which case, we just swing for 11 now. <laughs> Put our opponent down to 7. We've got 3 points from the Ballista. we got the perfect follow-up with Hangerback if my opponent does find something. i got to say, this one's looking pretty good for the home team. All right, let's see what their big answer is. They do have it. All right, it's Ritual of Soot. Unfortunately for them, they're dead. <laughs> Ritual of Soot. Uh... Does not exile, therefore this Hangerback Walker is going to be lethal. Because we're going to have nine Thopters at the end of all this. I love this card. I, I remember when this card was playable. Modern, Black Red Eldrazi. Love it. I wish I could remember what I was going to say earlier. I don't, but who cares? We won. No misclicks. Taking it down. 2 and O oh, with his Hardened Scales. Lurus deck. Companion not needed. That was great. All right, let's see if we can pull off the perfect 3-0. All right, trying to pull off the 3-0 with this deck here, and I gotta say, I'm into this hand. I don't know how good this hand is, per se, um, but uh, it seems reasonable to me. I would like to keep. It's certainly not one of the more broken starts. We don't have any of our uh, our things that give additional plus one counters, but, I mean, we do just have a generically strong hand here, right? If our opponent has a creature, we've got removal. If we've, if we've got a nice set of artifacts, one of them's going away thanks to this Thoughtseize. Probably a seal over here if I had to uh, had to guess. Don't know what our opponent's up to, but I do know that I like their choice of land art. I've been going with these full art Nyx lands. I think they're pretty cool. They're flashy on camera, blah, blah, blah. But I gotta say, this one's pretty cool. I'm not really an art guy. I don't, uh, I, I'm sort of aware of the artists and magic and I, I, I know, you know, I talk to some of them or, or whatever, but I, uh, I, I'm not somebody who looks at the art on magic cards. Honestly, I look at a card and Sure, I guess this is a thing of somebody kicking somebody off. I I don't know. It's just a fatal push. <laughs> that's that's the way I look at magic from a from a more competitive mindset. So uh when I do when something does catch my eye, like this sweet swamp here, it's pretty neat. Uh oh my gosh, now there is a draw. There is a draw. Uh to honor that draw, I will tell this story though. On the since artists came up. Um a couple years ago, I uh, got a pass to, I received a press pass to DreamHack, uh, I believe it was in Austin. It was the first DreamHack event, which they had Magic at. Now, this was not Magic Arena. This was Paper Magic. It was a three-day tournament with a really unique structure. Cascade Games, I think, was the TO putting it on. Uh, you'd have to win a qualifier, which they ran every hour. You'd have to go 4-0 in a qualifier to qualify for the 64-person Sunday 10K. It was a $10,000 tournament. A friend and I Qualified through two-headed giant on Friday afternoon. Okay, but you could you could draft. They had all kinds of formats. You could do all this stuff. It was all draft, uh, uh, but they had a bunch of old sets and stuff. So you could win a qualifier, and and then you go to uh, the sixty-four thing on Sunday. 
you also earned points every step of the way. So you either won your pod and automatically qualified, or if you were in one of the like top, I don't know, 24 people or something, by the end of Saturday night, if you were on the leaderboard, you'd get into top eight, or I'm sorry, into the top 64 on Sunday. It was a cool tournament. Anyways, I top 64 I win my draft pod in the 64. I go on to the top eight. I Now we're playing for a lot of money. It's serious, right? I am... Um, I'm going to... Sorry, I'm going to take my turn here. Where are my opponents? Main phase? We're on my turn. Okay. We're on my turn and I've played a land. I need to figure out what I'm doing. All right. Let me let me finish. We will return to this story momentarily here. Um, what do I want to do? I think I, would, I just want to play the hanger back. I know that we have the hardened scales and I could do something else but i like the idea of activating the hanger back here and if my opponent kills it whatever we'll take our thopters so anyways i do the top eight draft it's amon ket amon ket has just come out i have done very few drafts of it i had drafted green black to make the top eight i had no experience with any of the red cards in the format so as it goes as it turns out though i draft what's open i'm in a red black deck there's a card i don't understand how it works we'll get to that later this whole weekend though since it's the first Magic event, no one knew what to expect. Noah Bradley was at the tournament to do art, you know, to have an artist booth. But no one was really there for Magic. So there wasn't, a, you know, the, the tournament had people it fired, but it just wasn't a Magic Fest. You know, there weren't 100 people who wanted to get Noah Bradley to sign something every hour of every day or whatever, right? So uh, he and I just kind of hung out over the course of the weekend. I got to know him a little bit. And so he, at that time, was telling me how he was getting into playing a little bit more Magic, um, which is great. Awesome. So... Top eight happens. I get to game two. I'm up a game. I think my deck's terrible, but I'm up a game. I have an opportunity to activate, I think it was Merciless Javelin Lanier, which makes you one of your opponent's creatures not block or something. I have like a billion lands in my hand. The point is, I did not read the can't block clause of the card. I thought it just put the counters on. Uh, so that was um, admittedly <laughs> a pretty painful situation to be in, right? So... That happens. I don't realize it. I'm just like, man, this was so unlucky to get mana flooded, blah, blah, blah. I move on to game three. I lose a close game three. Noah Bradley, who's been watching behind me, leans over and goes, hey, Corbin, um, can I ask you a question about your game? I'm like, yeah, sure. What's up, man? He's like, and I'm in like pretty good spirits. I, I, I don't get super salty about losing about stuff, especially I, I didn't really have high expectations for that tournament. And then I top it, right? I made $1,000 or whatever. It was great. But Noah Bradley leans in and he goes, did you... Why didn't you swing for lethal? And I'm like, he points at the card, and I'm like, well, ooh, that's that's a nice one, actually. That's like the perfect answer to this. And he goes, Corbin, uh, I, I go, no, because I'm bad at magic. That's why, actually, this was I. I didn't read my card. Reading the card explains the card. I didn't read the card. I just got completely, there's like 10 people around, everyone's watching, everyone just starts laughing at me. I just got burned by Noah Bradley, who's learning how to play Magic, but saw the easy line I didn't because I failed to properly read my card. It was a pretty funny incident. So then, a year later, something comes up, and I think Noah Bradley posts on Reddit, and I, I just comment on it, just some generic comment. Uh, and Noah Bradley replies, and he goes, Corbin, do you remember that time you forgot to swing for lethal? On Reddit to the world, just calling me out in front of everybody. I was just like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Anyways, Noah's a great guy. Go check out his art. <laughs> That's the only artist story I have. Uh, I was super happy about that event. I mean, I top aided it. I won a bunch of money. It was cool. It was uh, well worth it. Now I'm going to sack a creature. And it's going to be the seal overseer. While I've been telling stories, my opponent is just, just destroying us with limited cards here. Flicker of Fate, Trial of Ambition. Are there cartouches coming next? What's happening? Uh, they have this is your oh, it's Yorion. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I gotta say this was interesting. This was an interesting turn of Turn of events. So I guess the only way I can deal with Yorion blinking trial of ambition here is to play my... I normally just play his big stone cold serpent, but I'm going to play my my Lurus. Uh, and then the stone cold serpent. This way, we lose the stone cold serpent to the Trial of Ambition. 
but then we get to untap and play those cards out of our graveyard, namely the, the, the Hangerback Walker, which, got to admit, not very good against Flicker of Fate, uh, which just blinks it and makes it those counters disappear, but um, it is it is pretty good against actual removal. So I think this is probably the only line we have to winning this game here. My opponent had Thoughtseize uh, removal, removal spell, uh, while we have a, a hand that uh, is not going to be very good against Yorion Blinks. That's for sure. Um, but if it's just Yorion Blink Trial of Doom Foretold. Okay. This is a very interesting deck from our opponent. I'm in. By the way, if you if you couldn't have guessed, I'm in. I love a good stack stack. It, what? That's a that's an interesting play from them though, because the thing is, I can just sack this hardened scales. I don't need two hardened scales, and really, the huge one for us is that now I get to play this hanger back walker. X can't be greater than one. Sure, whatever, that's fine. It gets to come into play with an extra counter, and now all of a sudden we don't care about Doom Foretold. We get, to, I mean, I do believe this says non-token, right? But we get to get, yeah, this was better than we deserved, I think, frankly, is probably how I'm going to describe my opponent not just playing Yori on there. Cost five mana, they could have played it, blinked this, which I guess we played around it. I mean, we played well, right? Um, but I gotta say, Doom Foretold just doesn't seem very good here. I mean, sacking that Hardened Scales doesn't matter for us. We have a recursive creature on board. And they're gonna have to sack something here. They have to sack the Cartouche, or they have to sack, I'm sorry, the, the, the Trial or the Doom Foretold itself. That doesn't seem very good. Um, I think they wanted to just play the Yorion anyways, blink the trial, make a sacrifice of Stone Cold Serpent, and then hope to draw removal for Loris. I don't know, unless I'm missing something here. I, I don't know that this is really getting them anywhere because just casting uh, the power of companions, right? We both have them. Ours currently ha has been better. I mean, that said, my opponent just plays a four or five. I suppose I, I, uh, I can't fatal push. I suppose I don't really have a lot of options for that, but. I don't know that this Doom Foretold play is working out for him. I think they wanted to keep things in play to blink with their Yorion, not be forced to sacrifice their own stuff. Um, I say that, you know, maybe something's coming back from the graveyard here, but uh, maybe they got a board wipe here. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, this, is, this is an interesting game, that's for sure, and I spent most of it telling stories. That, To be fair, not, not a lot was happening then, but <laughs> this is an interesting game. Just noticed my opponent was was typing to me in chat. Might explain there. Uh, they're going. To, they've been going a little slow, but they said, uh, "Hey, are you Corbin Hossler? I am. Thanks for watching. Uh, sweet deck. <laughs> if you're, I, I I say this. I always address it when people bring it up, not because of any reason other than this. Uh, I assume that if someone has a conversation with me, they are then going to watch the YouTube video of it when it comes out, and I want to say hi. So hello. Thanks for playing. Thanks for scooping. By the way, you were in fact very dead. On to game two here. Uh, Abrupt Decays definitely want you. Um, barrier Breach? I found what the Barrier Breaches are for. <laughs> That's for sure. Jeez, okay. Um, hmm, what to cut, what to cut, what to cut. The Fatal Pushes. Easy cuts to the Fatal Pushes. This gets us a long way here. Um, I don't think I want to cut any creatures. Uh, given that my opponent's playing a bunch of sacrifice effects and whatnot. Um, I do need to cut one more card, though. It's probably going to be... I actually like the Caterpillar as a one-mana way to get around uh, sacrifice effects. It's going to be the Abrupt Decay, actually. Abrupt Decay might just <laughs> somehow be the worst of the uh, removal options. let my opponent know that we're recording they're playing a sweet deck i gotta say it took me a minute to figure it out i i we gotta say when you when your opponent plays flicker of fate against you in a an eternal format uh your first thought is not man my opponent's playing a really competitive deck but i have to say yorion forces you to play 80 that means you're gonna have to play some less than ideal cards anyways flicker of fate blinks all those enchantments the two mana diabolic edict that's blinkable that card was insane in in limited and it's really really good in this format too with yorion at least so uh this i like i like what my opponents got going on i'm very happy that we won obviously but uh i like what's happening i definitely like uh this hand here we had to go thoughtsies hardened scales thoughtsies 
I'm in. Oops. All right. Sorry. I got to. Right, my phone and I are chatting here. It's a live recording. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I guess I was going to say there's no editing. There is editing, but not not we're not editing any of this out. All right. Nothing changed, it looks like. This is still a plan. I guess actually one thing changed. We don't have to uh, deal ourselves damage here. Our opponent mulligan to six, and they have no land. So, all right, let's think this one through here. Elspeth's Nightmare is nice, guys. If they had one of these, I'd take it. If it was just one, I'd take it so they couldn't go get that planes. I, I, think, I think that what I want to do... I think I want to play around the worst case scenarios. I think the worst case scenario is probably my opponent finding a land, playing Birth of Miletus. They had the Scry too. This was actually a pretty good hand for them. Um, I, I think it's this. That card's very good against us for, for a multitude of reasons. I mean, all of the cards in their hand can get rid of one of our creatures, right? Or the ones that we look at in that sense anyways. Like, the Kaya's Wrath is a board wipe. We can play around a board wipe as best we can. Uh, they did get there, by the way. The Trial, um, we, they're going to make a sack of creature. But the Elspeth's Nightmare would have got our creature. It probably would have got something out of our hand before we were done. Maybe, possibly, anyways, before we were done. Um, and then it would have got our graveyard when we want to reload with... a with Luris after we, we force them into the Kaya's Wrath. So, um, yeah, gotta say, I, I think that we made the right call there. Let's go ahead and Thoughtseize again here. Um, well, I think I have to take the trial because my opponent's eventually going to hit their Yorion and the Yorion is more of, the Yorion blinking that trial is more of a problem than the Kaya's Wrath is, in my opinion. I could be wrong about that, but I think it is. I mean, I think that we just play a 3-3, three, three, or we play a, a Metallic Mimic next turn. Um, we, we we eventually bait our opponent into this Wrath, and then we reload, reload with Loris out of the graveyard. My opponent, by the way, they kept a one-lander and then drew godly. I mean, obviously the temple to get the land, that's reasonable, but uh, this is a... They hit another land after that, and then this Treacherous Blessing here is very nice. Yeah, they sure they'll hurt themselves a little bit, which I, I I'm down for. I like that, but um, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do this. We will name. Do I name Snake? Name Snake with all of these. Name. Conch. Got to be construct, I guess. Because even if I named Snake, it would still uh, just be a 3-3 three, three on this turn, which is not enough to, to get to bust through that wall over there. So this game's going to be hard. I won't lie. My opponent drew a billion cards off of Treacherous Blessing. Um, it, it's very, very, very easy for them at this point to have, I mean, anything, but just, just hitting the lands to play Yorion and blanking it. This Yorion deck seems very good. Uh, it's got some value cards right here. Now, obviously, if my opponent doesn't find the land there, this game goes way differently because I, I get to play get to play it super differently. Or even if they had only had one Birth of Miletus, I, I'd take it then. That would have been nice. Um, but having two guaranteeing their land drops, it's a very... Again, we're talking limited bombs here. This isn't even a limited bomb, but it is just fits the bill and constructed. It's played in standard. It's now played basically anything with Yorion. But even before that, this card was getting played. You want to hit your land drops in a control deck. You want the defender and you want the life. It's just kind of the perfect early drop for a, for a deck like this. So uh, with that said, I kind of think that we're just dead at this point. I'm going to be honest. And that's just so crazy to say, but I think it's just true. Um, I guess at this point, I may as well go. I, I don't I don't even know what, what we're hoping to do here. This is going to be... Our hand wasn't bad at all. In fact, our hand was maybe even good, but I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I don't know. It was hard. Maybe instead of taking the trial with the second one, I take the wrath and then try to work through it. But at the time, they really didn't have much going on. I thought I would be able to bait the wrath. And the thing is, we can actually kind of beat a wrath pretty well, thanks to, to, to 
cards like Hangerback and Luris and so on. I thought that we had a plan there, but now, as it turns out, that Treacherous Blessing was the difference. It just reloaded my opponent's hand. They get to play this value game. I don't know that we're going to be able to force the Wrath because they have all of these enchantments in play. They play Yorion. I'm probably just scooping, frankly. I don't, I don't know that we can beat it. And they don't even feel like they need to. So that's not good for us either. Man. Okay. Wow. Now, this is a little unexpected. They, they actually are going to pull the trigger on the Wrath. Okay. That was uh, very good for me, I think. Um, I can just do the same thing now. I'm going to play out the snake for three. All of a sudden, I have five power. I mean, this is what we wanted to do with Loris. Instead, I don't even have to do it with Loris. Um, my opponent doesn't get to blink their birth of Miletus now. They don't get to... They they burned the Wrath. They lost their O4s. I think they might have pulled the trigger on that Kai's Wrath a little early. I mean, that said, they still get to play Yurion. They still get to draw more cards with Treacherous Blessing. They still get to make a sacrifice, this Metallic Mimic with this. I mean, we're still in a lot of trouble. Right, don't get me wrong. We, we are. We've got a long way to go here. Um, but you know, Stone Cold Serpent has protection for multicolored, so that means Yorion, being this uh, this multicolored card here, can't block it. I also have Reach on the Serpent if I choose to play defensively instead with it, which we, I mean, we pretty much probably have to. Uh, but I also, in theory, can play Luris and this other one from my graveyard and attack as well. So. I don't know if we're going to win this game. I mean, I think that we're probably certainly not favored to. My opponent's going to get to draw three more cards here. Treacherous Blessing is, is a little silly. Um, they get a Flicker of Fate, their Yorion and stuff. It's pretty neat. Wish I had that Tails End or <laughs> Disallow to counter this ability when they come back. Um, but all that said, I, I, I guess this is probably the best chance we have, right? We draw a Hangerback Walker or something like that. Um, I guess we're in the game. So Uncle Serpent doing a little bit of work here. I, like I said, I don't know if it's it's going to be enough. I don't know if it'll matter, but it is putting in work. That's for sure. Uh, all right, let's play the Luris. Play this Stone Cold Serpent for one. I, now, again, I, I don't know if this is correct. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm supposed to wait till I can play bigger Stone Cold Serpents, but oh, my opponent's Fatal Push. I guess our best hope is that they just have uh, sort of the, the weaker end of their deck. I mean, they have a bunch of cards, but maybe they flood it out. <laughs> they do have the Fatal Push, though. That's uh, That's pretty bad for us. I say it's pretty bad. I mean... We have a Luris. It's not... We can just recast it, right? That, in theory, would be absolutely fine. We could recast it. It'd be uh, even bigger thanks to this Constrictor. But I have to imagine that our opponent is sitting on some kind of removal for Luris to slam the door on us here. Trial of Ambition is not it, though. It's good here, clearly. My opponent is... They're taking the pings here off of the uh, Treacherous Blessing. But as long as we have Luris in play, we got a shot. Turns out this card's very good. If my opponent attacks, I certainly hope that they do. It flies. They are. That means that I get to attempt, at least, to swing back uh, with the Luris here uh, and gain gain life back. Um, maybe, anyways, but... Oh, okay. Uh, that'll kill us. Flicker of Fate will kill us. All right, good game. On to the sideboard. Oh, we do want the abrupt decay. Jeez. My opponent just destroyed us there. I guess we'll give this a shot. That was sick. That was a very fun URI on Blink deck, I gotta say. 80 cards is just fun. Look, every that's the first thing you learn when you play Magic. You don't play 41 cards unlimited. You don't play 61 cards against Instructed. You definitely take apart your 67 card casual deck with 20 lands in it you built when you first started playing. You don't play 80 cards! Until Yorion comes around, then you do. Uh, that's neat. I love it. Again, like I said earlier, same with, same with, I might be tired of it eventually. I love them as standard mechanics. Uh, but for now, I'm having fun. And this hand is, I mean, it's pretty medium. It's a lot of lands, uh, clearly, as you can see. But the important thing here is that we have the Hangerback Walker. That is, it seems like, at least, that is 
by far the most important card in this matchup. My opponent wants to grind us out with uh, with with sacrifice effects, with everything else, uh, and obviously we we don't want them to. So um, now I kind of have a bit of a decision to make. I, I don't I think it's actually pretty clear though. I, I'm not gonna get trial of ambition again and lose a winding constrictor here. I'll I'll wait on the winding constrictor, play the hanger back. Worst case scenario, we my opponent plays a removal spell, we still get a one one flyer out of the deal, uh, and then we get to go constrictor into ballista. So look, I don't know. Our opponent stack seems like it's probably pretty good against ours. They got a lot of board wipes, they've got a lot of, of game life and look, we feels good here though. We did uh we didn't we, we didn't get greedy and play the constrictor and think about what a big turn three we could have. We, we played the safe play. We played the hanger back. And uh, we got as rewarded as we could get in that, you know, we this is a reasonable trade for us. I think it's play Ballista here. Oh, this doesn't work like that. Whoop, it's not play Ballista here. I keep making that mistake. I keep uh, I keep trying to do that. It does not work like that. You have to have a counter put on it. One or more, not zero. One or more to get another. So doing it for zero doesn't work. Um, I actually don't think I want to do anything here. Though. I mean, I think I don't want to draw these two lands that I've drawn. Uh, or maybe just one land. But uh, I don't want to draw those. Uh, but I do like, I think just holding on here. Next turn we can play um, a 3-3 three, three Ballista. See kind of where things go from there. And then we have a big Stone Cold Serpent after that if we need it. Oath of Kaya. Okay. Fair enough. Pretty good with a Yorion blink. And even with the Hangerback Walker, this is just, this is just ki killer. Ozolith is pretty much what I want, though. I think that this is, this actually, drawing this right now might have been our ticket to winning this game. I think that this was a very important draw. Um, so with that said, I'll explain why in a minute, but with that said, I'm now just going to go ahead and uh, I think run out the, oh, I was supposed to play this tapped land, but Probably doesn't matter that much. Um, all right, so we'll we'll do it like this, I guess. We'll play the Ozolith. We'll play the Stone Cold Serpent for three. Uh, we'll get in there with the attack. So uh, the reason I said that uh, this this o o Ozolith might be the difference is I don't know what's going to happen next turn. I know that the turn after that, my opponent's probably going to play Yorion. With Oath of Kaya and Trial of Ambition in play, they're going to make us those two creatures, which is both our creatures. But we have five mana. We have Alurus. We're going to play Luris and we're going to play Hangerback X equals one because uh, that's all you can do. But then we get to move to combat. And if my opponent, you know, once they've removed our Stone Cold Servant, we have three counters on the Ozolith. We get to put all those counters onto the Hangerback. And then basically my opponent needs Flicker of Fate or otherwise the Hangerback is going to make a million tokens. And all of a sudden we don't care about all the trial of ambitions in the world. So... <laughs> I tell you, I, I make a plan, I explain a plan, my opponent throws the plan out the window by playing Demonic Pact. In the beginning of your upkeep, choose one hasn't been chosen. Four damage to any target, you gain four life. Target opponent discards two cards, you draw, you lose the game. You play it with Yorion, you don't lose the game, you just get the three beneficial effects. So you're investing four mana to get three beneficial effects at your upkeep over the next several turns. Why not? <laughs> Why not, right? That's all I, all I got to say. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay, well, that said then, I guess let's just go ahead and... My opponent hasn't wrapped. I, I don't know if they're going to. They're playing like they're going to Yorion instead of wrapping. I'm just going to play out this uh, Ballista here. Get in for four. Yeah, I mean, this is just all... It's, it's crazy what a card like, uh, you know, what, what Luris does. Like, in so many ways. I don't have to worry about discarding Luris to Demonic Pact. It's literally better in the Companion Zone than it is in my hand. It's not an eighth card in your hand. It's better than that. Um, and if we win this game, that's going to be why, because I get to execute that play we talked about. Um, and it wouldn't have worked otherwise. It's not like I can just hold Luris in my hand, wait it out, and then make that play, because this Demonic Pact could mess it up. A Thoughtseize could mess it up. It's safe from all of that, though, which means I just get to play this game, in not a carefree, but a, a, a calculated risk risk a uh, calculated risk that we're able to take here based i have no fear playing out that ballista because i know that this forces my opponent to wrath and then a wrath is good for us 
In fact, geez, I mean... We could replay the Ballista out of the graveyard and put, what, like five counters on it? Nuts. All right, so my opponent is going to uh, kill the Stone Cold Serpent. And I would like to put them on my Ozolith. So look, here's the thing. We're a very long way from winning this game. Um, if we win. I don't know that we're going to win. I, my entire plan is to put a bunch of counters on a Hangerback Walker. My opponent could just flicker fate the Hangerback Walker and basically we're dead. Um, their deck seems very good against ours sort of in general here. But you know what? We recognized probably the most powerful line available to us. The way that we can most cleanly interact with any board wipes our opponent might have, any just the sacrifice effects that they're stacking up on us, and the expected Yorion Blink that will be coming either this turn or in the next several. My opponent's probably weighing out that calculation in their mind right now. Um, but hey, we're doing what we can. We're playing to our outs. That's all you can do in this game. So let's see what happens here. Looks like they are going to go ahead and pull the trigger. So seems fine. <laughs> It seems fine for us. It seems as good as it's going to get. Now, uh, keep in mind, there are some ways this could go wrong. There's a lot of ways this could go wrong. I mean, we're not going to have any board when we untap here as far as creatures go. Um, we're just going to have a big hanger back in our upkeep. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, and, and uh, on our turn, and hope that that's good enough. All right, so let's see. I assume that Othakaya will be targeting the Thopter so that they can guarantee. Yep. So I don't feel the need to do two damage to them. I'll just put the counters on the Ozolith here. And we will execute this game plan that we've been setting up for several turns. A uh, game plan that just got even better. Make sure I've got my math right here. I do. I mean, this is it, though. This is our... <laughs> this is, we are laying it all out on the table quite... Well, I have say literally, but we're just digital, quite digitally laying it all out on the table right now uh, and hope that it's good enough. It is good. You know, regardless of what happens in this match, this is good. This is disgusting uh, what we're doing right now. Now, if my opponent answers it, we'll lose the game, but so be it because that is a uh, that is a that is an 8-8 hangerback walker. We're winning the race uh, against the Orion with that if they if they kill it, that's great. We we get a sack it, then we never have to worry about Trial of Ambition again. Now my opponent's going to use this Demonic Pact, I'm sure, to kill my Luris. So this was the plan. This was the game plan here. It's it, We've got to cross our fingers uh, and pray that this is going to be good enough. So uh, we'll see. It's fun. It's fun, though. I'm having fun with this deck. I'm having fun with Luris. I'm having fun with the Ozolith. I, I have a, a weak spot for Hangerback Walker already. And now when Hangerback Walker becomes the only, the best card in the matchup, I, I'm hooked. This has, been a, this has been a fun deck to play. Like I said, it reminds me a little bit of that Golden Time in Modern. If, maybe that's what I was talking about earlier. Golden Time in Modern was just that all the, you had decks like Demir Inverter that were the best deck, quote-unquote, um... You know, maybe even something like Splinter Twin back in the day where it was very good. It's the best deck, but it did have its weaknesses. It wasn't unbeatable. You could even beat it with Jank occasionally. It kind of is how Demir Inverter feels to me. Occasionally they just lose to their own, to decking themselves thanks to the, the Inverter. Um, I really like, I, 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 we'll see where the companions land, but I, I do kind of like where Pioneer is at. I think Dig Through Time is probably going to get banned eventually, but for now, I love Pioneer. And my opponent getting aggro with the Orion here makes sense. They're not going to be blocking with it anytime soon. Now they have gained a lot of life for what it's worth. Twenty-eight. They're I mean, that's four hits. So they kill us in four hits. So we don't have trample. They have four cards in hand. They actually have that shambling vent. I really shouldn't forget about. But uh, evolutionary leap was a pretty busted draw here. Honestly, that was the best draw in the deck. Let's see what they're, they're going to fire up the Shambling Vent to block. So this this actually works out pretty nicely for us. I think they are uh, doing the expected thing. They say, hey, I go to 30. That's I, Now I'm winning the race. But uh, you're not winning the race against Evolutionary Leap. That's for sure. I don't think I want to sacrifice this thing. Also, keep in mind, my opponent could just lose the game. 
I assume not. Surely their deck is built so such that they don't actually have to lose the game to Demonic Pact, especially since you get to draw two cards off of it as one of the modes. Uh, but, I mean, they're two turns away from losing to Demonic Pact. I think that I take this hit. I'm trying to play around a sweeper. Basically, that's the problem, is if I were to Evolutionary Leap just to basically be greedy with the hanger back here, um, we get, we're dead to a sweeper at that point, right? But the, the clock is actually on my opponent. Not our clock. They're the Demonic Pack clock. Um, so we're at least going to have to see something from them um, before we, we'll have some more information before we are forced to make a decision here. Um, we're going to get some of that right now. It's a Doom Foretold. Um, thinking. You have to sacrifice a non-token to Doom Foretold. They can sacrifice their Demonic Pact. Their deck is sick. Shoot me this list. If you're watching this match opponent on YouTube, shoot me this list. This is, this is neat. Uh, anyway, so what I think I'm going to do is go to our upkeep. I'm going to activate this with the Doom Foretold trigger on the stack. I'm going to sacrifice it to the Doom Foretold. I get to put 10 counters on my Ozolith. If we ever draw a hanger back, or I'm sorry, well, sure, a hanger back, but a walking ballista or whatever, too, it's going to be pretty sick. We drew an abrupt decay which is good for killing nothing right now. Uh, my, my opponent's going to choose discard too, so that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, suppose it is what it is. Um, I do want to go ahead and sack one of these here. And there's the Ballista. So, yeah, I'm in. I'm going to Ballista for this amount. I wish you could move... I wish you could move some of the counters. You have to move them all, which is unfortunate because I do wish I could move some of them. Uh, so as it stands now, I actually don't think that I'm going to do... Well, I don't think I'm going to do this. I mean, I'm going to do this, but I think I can say no. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I think I'm going to say no. Look, the Walking Bliss is a very good draw for us, but our opponent's at 30 life. I have blockers for the Yorion now. They have to do something. Um, so I think I'd kind of like to make them do that. You know, if this Abrupt Decay had been an Assassin's Trophy, though, we could have Assassin's Trophy the Doom Foretold and made my possibly made my opponent lose to the Demonic Pact. I mean, we don't know if they would have lost to the Demonic Pact, but uh, I really wish I could hit this Doom Foretold, though. Um, okay, well, we'll hit the Elphikaya. You know, I guess my opponent is is a little in the tank to their own doom foretold here, right? I can kill the Yorion next turn. I, I can untap. Sa I can activate the Evolutionary Leap a bunch of my upkeep with these tokens, then sack it to the doom foretold, then use the Ballista to kill the Yorion with the Ozolith counters. Let's see what they do. This game is... This is a very interesting game, and fortune... Oh. Well. I mean, this is why I didn't dump the counters on it. Unfortunately, because I... I don't even know if I got... I, I guess... I guess you could say I got greedy. I don't know. Uh, but I used that... Uh, I used that mana to abrupt decay before I lost the card... Kuneros. Okay, I mean, that doesn't really matter much to me now. I'm not doing anything with my graveyard, but I mean, we got a lot of good draws. Any creature, obviously. But this is, I mean, this is actually truly problematic here. Nice draw. I think we're going to lose. I think the Doom Foretold is going to get us. I think that was pretty much it. Oh, I could put them on theirs? Wait. You can put minus one counters on a creature. I'm more impressed with this card now more than ever. 
Uh, we're very dead, though, so I don't know that it particularly is relevant. I don't know. I don't know. I could have. I could have not abrupt decayed there. Yeah. I, I was gonna have to discard two cards. Is the thing. Maybe I just discard the abrupt decay, and then I evolutionary leap twice at the end of the turn. That might have been a better line. I don't know if it would have been good enough, but I mean, I don't. It would have been better than what happened. Yeah, Doom Foretold did some work for our opponent here. I think they're going to get us. I think, I guess what happens, I'm both not from, super familiar with my deck, but I'm also not super familiar with their deck. Um, and I did not, I think I think I could, I, I got so caught up in not wanting to get got um, that I probably missed my opportunity to win the game. Well, I, I could have had creatures in hand. I could have had cards in hand. And I could have spent my mana uh it's so hot and if i think i think i probably i don't know that i punted obviously because look our opponent is doing everything they, they got everything they could want right now so i don't i, I won't say that I, I i've punted per se but um things did not work out that's for sure we got doom foretold very hard i guess drawing these lands we we're probably just gonna lose anyways even if i had because i had two mana open i would have got these two cards i would have been two deeper but uh, we still might have just got destroyed by all of this. My opponent's sitting at five, and I think we're dead. Yeah. Oh well, GG's. Good match. That was uh, that was an interesting one. All right. Well, we weren't going to get there anyways. That was two card. We were not ever going to draw out of that one. So uh, unfortunate. Our opponent's deck, I think, is just uh, it kind of got our number. But uh, that's the way it goes. Their deck was fun. Our deck was fun. This was an awesome series. So everybody, thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler. Remember, from 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 my quarantine to yours, stay safe out there, everybody. Uh, I'll see you next week back with Mining Modern on Thursday. Every Thursday, if cool stuff, you'll see some content from me. And check out the Advantage Bar on Wizards' YouTube channel if you're into that. See you next time, everybody.